from ABC 15 Arizona. Breaking news. Off the top at six, we are staying on top of a number of breaking stories right now. Police shoot a man, sending him to the hospital. The suspect reportedly hit a patrol car before the shooting happened. And one person is dead after a horrific wrong way crash on the freeway. We have crews at both scenes to get you the latest information this morning. We begin with that deadly wrong way crash in the West Valley. This scene at the Loop 101 near Bethany Hall. That's where our Jamie Warren is live. Right, so Nick and Kaylee, we have just moved off of the freeway. If you were with us at the 530 hour here on ABC 15 mornings, I want to show you right now. This is the off ramp of the Loop 101 at Cardinals Way. Right now, it appears that that part of the freeway is still shut down, but I'm going to have you come with me this way. This is the on ramp of the Loop 101 now at Cardinals Way. So you can see that uh, crews are or cars rather are getting back onto the freeway. So again, uh, people being able now to get back on after that deadly wrong way crash. And I'm going to take you back to what happened at around 1:30 this morning. The DPS sergeant on scene tells me that the driver of a white car entered the freeway going the wrong direction at Glendale Avenue. Seconds later, it was hit by a semi truck. And according to DPS, the driver going the wrong way ended up dying at the hospital. They say they do believe that he was under the influence at the time of that crash. The driver of the semi truck, though, they say uh, is expected to be OK in this situation. But again, a deadly wrong way crash causing the freeway to shut down for at least five hours. We are right near State Farm Stadium, but again, things are starting to open back up. And uh, I know that Megan Thompson in our traffic department right now is taking a look at all of the cameras for us and will uh, give us more of an update on how exactly this is impacting your morning commute. Jamie, thank you so much for letting us know what you're seeing on the ground. That is very helpful so I can relay some of that information when it comes to your commute to you. This is a live view from one of our cameras of the Loop 101. These are the northbound lanes. This shot near Indian School Road showing you some of the backup. Some people getting off relatively early to try and avoid this one, and that's what I'm going to suggest as we go to your traffic maps. This is that icon right there on your screen showing that closure. We know they are in the clearing stages of opening this one up, but the residual backup is going to be around for quite some time as soon as they work to get that one open. And we're seeing those speeds drop in this area below 10 miles per hour as you're approaching this scene and they're moving everybody off of the freeway. So I would suggest like we saw in those live images, exit the freeway ahead of time. That could be at Indian School Road. That's an option for you. Then you want to travel northbound to re enter the freeway beyond this closure. So potentially take 83rd Avenue up there and re-enter at Northern Avenue. That is an option for you. You could also take some other freeways altogether. You could try and take Grand Avenue, the Loop 303, the 17. I know those may be out of your way. I definitely would suggest getting off the freeway, getting back on as this is a relatively short closure and we're seeing green conditions beyond that. I wanted to check those desert drive times for you also around the valley. Loop 101 eastbound from the 17 to the 51. We're in the green. Loop 202 South Mountain South Southbound from I-10 to the 202, 19 minutes, and the 347. You're checking in from Maricopa to I-10 at 14 minutes. And the other story breaking this morning, an officer involved shooting in Glendale near 59th Avenue in Ocotillo. Our Amelia Fabiano live at the scene. Amelia, you have been out there since the news broke. What is the latest information you're getting from your sources on the ground? So right now we can confirm one suspect is in the hospital with life threatening injuries after a Glendale police officer shot them just after midnight this morning. And I want to give you a glimpse at the scene going on behind me. We just have a neighbor trying to uh, get out here. But behind the tape, we saw officers just moments ago specifically looking at this Glendale police car. And just behind this, you're going to see another vehicle with its door open, some evidence markers on the ground. Police also focusing their investigation on that car as well. So here's what we know happened. A suspect they say in this area was acting erratically early this morning, hitting cars when officers got here. That suspect got into a car, tried driving away, ended up hitting a police vehicle out here with an officer inside it got out, started running away, and that's when some sort of a confrontation between police and this suspect happened. 
and police ended up shooting that suspect. As I said, he is in the hospital. We know with life threatening injuries this morning, no officers hurt in this situation, but officers still actively investigating this scene this morning. We'll keep you updated on any more information we get on this suspect, how they're doing and what exactly happened between these officers and that suspect. Back to you in studio. All right, Amelia, nice hustle on that story. We appreciate it. Let's switch gears now. Talk about that most accurate forecast as we wake up to uh, feel, feeling pretty good out there oh, on a so Wednesday good. morning. It'll put you in a good mood for <laughs> sure, Jorge. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic this morning and for the rest of the day. And if you like warm or even hot temperatures, you're going to love this forecast for the rest of the week and especially for the weekend, too. Now, here's how it looks outside right now. Regarding those temperatures, areas beginning to drop. Now we're in the low to mid 50s in the West Valley anyway, from Levine to Goodyear and Buckeye, even near 60 there in the far West Valley. Meanwhile, as you head towards Central Park to the Valley, we're in the mid 50s in Tempe and Scottsdale, lower 50s in Chandler and 53 in Santana Valley. And the planner for the rest of your day, showing temperatures staying in the 60s through at least 8 o'clock, then climbing into the 80s at noon and reaching a high of about 86 degrees. That's four degrees above average. A sunny and warmer day, and the warming trend continues for the rest of the week. We'll tell you when we do expect those highs to reach 90 degrees coming up in your most accurate forecast. Well, this morning, kids as young as five are now eligible to get a COVID-19 vaccine. This video here showing the first kids under the age of 11 rolling up their sleeves at Pleasant Pediatrics in Peoria. And we do know the doctor's offices are across the valley are now taking appointments. School districts in Arizona will be allowed to keep their mask mandates in place. The Arizona Supreme Court upholding a lower court ruling that called the law banning schools from requiring masking up unconstitutional. The court saying this was because of the way the law was passed by state lawmakers, including it through provisions in the budget bill. Right now, the investigation is underway into an overnight shooting. A man was shot in Glendale shortly before midnight. Take it to the hospital in critical condition. The suspect remains on the run right now. Police believe the shooter and the victim actually do know each other here. It's been 12 hours for first responders. This video from the scene of a deadly crash in Phoenix. Two cars colliding near 52nd Street and McDowell. Police telling us one of those cars caught fire. One person was killed. A second person critically injured right now. Still not clear exactly what caused this. Buckeye police working with OSHA right now to investigate a building collapse at Clayton Homes. Officers say a man was working inside a manufactured home near Miller and Southern when the structure fell. It trapped him. He was seriously hurt, but we can tell you this. We are, we are told that he is expected to survive. I mean, the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office dealing with a staffing shortage, so the agency is putting together a request to get help from the National Guard. MCSO asking for 135 positions, 54 of the critical ones to be temporarily filled by guard members. Now, these are mostly administrative and support roles. MCSO says it's not clear yet how long they would be needed, but this could alleviate some burnout and overtime issues. That detention officer is not wearing multiple hats at that point. You know, we're taking some of the workload off of that individual and transitioning it to somebody that's going to be working behind the scenes, you know, processing paperwork and doing things like that. As of this month, MCSO has hundreds of vacant positions. Sheriff Paul Penzone is reconsidering the request. The governor, though, does have the final say. Happening today, Tempe City Councilman Joel Navarro is hosting a discussion on ASU's research on de-escalation when it comes to policing. This is happening at Gold Bar Espresso on McClintock and Southern, and it starts at noon. We are 370 days until the midterm elections, and the political landscape already shifting. Next on ABC 15 Mornings, some highly contested governor's races across the country. I want to be able to sit by you so you're not afraid so that you can continue, so that you can, can successfully get your children back or you can get help that you need. Finding strength and support in recovery, how new help in Arizona is offering new hope for families and new careers in social work. They had big vacation plans until they got there. I'm investigator Joe Deuce with two stories of online booking, paying in advance. What happens when they don't have a reservation? And taking you live to the Loop 101, the northbound lanes near Cardinals Way, we are seeing that DPS is getting ready to reopen the roadway. We're tracking that for you after this deadly wrong way crash coming up. We've got more breaking news to get to, and I want you to come over to the TV and take a look at this picture. This is just coming into our newsroom from Peoria. Right now, as we speak, police are looking for this little girl. She's 11 years old. Her name is Callie 
Packer. She reportedly ran away from her home last night. She's four foot nine. She weighs about 90 pounds. Please take a good look at her. Her home is in the area of 108th Avenue and Happy Valley Parkway. If you see her, please call police. More top headlines this morning. The New Jersey governor's race still too close to call right now. Republican candidate Jack Tutorelli hoping to upset Democrat incumbent Phil Murphy. Right now, Chitterelli is leading by less than a thousand votes at last check. ABC News is projecting that Republican candidate Glenn Youngkin will be the next governor of the state of Virginia. Youngkin narrowly defeating Democrat Terry McAuliffe in a race that's been seen as a warning for the Democratic Party ahead of the 2022 midterms. Testimony continues today in the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse. He's facing homicide charges for fatally shooting two men and injuring another. This happening last year during protests following a police shooting in Wisconsin. Now, for the second time in a month, workers at John Deere voting down a contract proposal. The latest deal would have given thousands of workers an immediate 10% pay raise and an $8,500 bonus. A new study shows that pandemic had many kids spending significantly more time on phones, tablets, and staring at screens. Researchers found 12 and 13 year olds doubled their non school related screen time. They say as screen time increased, so did their worry and also their stress levels. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Let's get a check of traffic now. Checking your time, it is 613 on your Wednesday morning, and we continue to monitor that breaking news out of the West Valley involving a deadly wrong way crash. The freeway has been shut down for hours. I was just watching those ADOT cameras. We have learned that the freeway has just reopened. I was watching the first few cars make their way onto the northbound lanes of the roadway near Cardinals Way. So we do expect some residual backup in this area, given the situation that was at hand. So we're seeing speed still as you're approaching this area in the red, dropping below 10 miles per hour at this point of the morning. So it still may be a good idea to get off the freeway ahead of time. You could re enter the freeway a little bit earlier rather than northern, maybe Camelback Road where we see those red kind of traffic flows easing, but that's just a suggestion as the, again, the freeway has just reopened following a deadly wrong way crash. We do have another crash. This one just off the freeway on the frontage road near the I-17 southbound at Cactus Road. Lots of flashing lights in that area, but your traffic flows on the freeway itself still look good. Similar story in the East Valley, the 60, the Superstition Freeway, the 202, the Red Mountain Freeway, and the 202, the Santan Freeway looking good right now. Your desert drive times, I-10 eastbound from the loop 303 to the many stack 23 minutes, the 17 from the 101 to the stack 11 minutes and the 51 from the 101 to the mini stack 13 minutes. Now it's time to get a check of that most accurate forecast with meteorologist Tori Torres. Hey, good morning everyone. Time right now 615 on your Wednesday. Meteorologist Jorge Torres here monitoring a clear start to your day with abundant clear skies and expect a lot of sunshine over the next several days and light winds too. a gradual warming trend is on the way throughout the entire state, but still chilly this morning at the Grand Canyon and Flagstaff below freezing to start off this Wednesday 26 in both locations and along the 40 in Winslow now 35 34 in Sholo 40 in Graham County with 50s and 60s to the south and to the west along the Colorado River Valley from Yuma all the way to Lake Havasu temperatures in the lower 60s and right at 70 degrees this morning there in Bullhead City, so we can still enjoy Enjoy the pool for a while, including today. Burn time 30 to 45 minutes around midday with UV index at 5, but starting off this morning with temperatures in the 60s and climbing into the 80s at noon and reaching 86 degrees later on this afternoon. That's four degrees above average, and the warming trend continues as well beginning tomorrow and the rest of the week. Tonight, though, clear and mild once again with overnight lows here in the valley in the lower 60s. Elsewhere across Arizona today will be in the 60s in Flagstaff with sunny skies, mid 70s in Sedona, and flirting with 90 degrees for you folks out in Lake Havasu later this afternoon. 88 in Yuma today, 87 in Gila Bend, and across northern Arizona, highs generally in the mid 60s later this afternoon, even 80 as you head toward Graham County, 70s in Gila County from Payson to Globe with lows tonight in that part of Arizona in the 40s and 50s up north, 20s and 30s and to the south and west, 50s and 60s generally. Now here's a look at what we expect for the next seven days in the valley. We go from 86 today to 88 tomorrow, near 90 on Friday and right at 90 degrees on Saturday. Now it does happen every now and then that we do get 90s in early November. It's not uncommon. The latest 90 degree day on record was November 17th, and that occurred 
just last year. Now, as far as Flagstaff, we're going to be in the 60s for the next several days, even warming up to 65 on Friday with lows right around freezing, then turning a little bit cooler early next week with even a slight chance for a shower on Tuesday there in the high country at 10%. 617 uplifting Arizona in a way you might not expect. A new mentorship program here in the Valley is paving the way for permanent change. It's going to just be a heartwarming morning for you after you see this. This one trains parents who have bounced back from rock bottom, quite literally, all to help others find a lifetime of success. In fact, I was able to meet one of these parents and her story will inspire you. To the world, you may be just one person, yet to one person, you may be the world. Celebrating life-changing work to help families and our community at Mesa Community College. Oh great, I'm gonna get emotional. Thanks to a social work program, internship experience, and life experience too, these parents will help other moms and dads in recovery by simply listening without judgment. We are proud of you. They have successfully overcome their drug addiction and successfully reunited with their children. Because of that, they now want to give back to other parents. You know, Monica I'm Gilchrist is among them. This single mom of three knows rock bottom because she's been there. To be really honest, I didn't know I had substance abuse problems. I was just continuing the cycle, unfortunately, that I saw. Fighting addiction for years. In and out of jail, she tells me, too many times to count. Nothing waited for me. Nothing waited for me to get sober. Life didn't care if Monica was sober. It was like Emotionally numb, she was charged with abandonment. Her kids? taken by the Arizona Department of Child Safety. It was right there. My children needed their mother. Ready to love her three, four, and 10-year-olds, sober and aware, she went to rehab, focused on healing and getting her kids back. I have a beautiful relationship with my children, and I did that. I look at them, and I did that. And I have all three of my children with me, and um, I want someone else to experience that. She also tells me it feels good to be part of the first group offering the kind of support never before available here in Arizona until now. A parent ally, someone, who, someone who's been there can say, you know what, I've had that rough day, you, let's take some breaths, what can we do? You know, there's, there's different ways that we can handle that situation because we have been there. You can beat the odds, I promise you. If you're sitting there and you're feeling hopeless this morning, this program is incredible. It is officially called the Parent Peer Support Social Work Scholarship Stipend Program. I know it's a mouthful. It is a program you do need to apply for, and we posted everything you need to know at abc15.com. And this could help so many people. Yes. Yeah, great story. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital out with a new coloring book this morning to help kids prepare for their COVID vaccinations. The book helps answer some questions kids might have about the shots in simple, non-scary terms that are easy to understand. Well, are you ready for a slice of fun on a Wednesday morning? Coming your way at 625. We're talking about pizza on your bulletin board. Getting your questions answered at 635. A health insider report focusing on vaccines for children and the concerns parents may have. And at 648, how's the weekend going to shape up? Meteorologist Jorge Torres is back with that exclusive Super 7 Day forecast. And the Cliff Castle Chopper is now over the scene of that deadly wrong way crash that had the freeway shut down in the northbound lanes in the West Valley for hours. There are still some restrictions in the area. The backup is obviously building. We're going to walk through your desert drive times. Some alternates for you coming up. Well, more home and baby items. They're coming to Fry's. Bed Bath & Beyond announcing it's going to start selling some of its stuff there early next year. Now, the items are going to be available first online only and for delivery. Then, in dedicated mini shops, are going to pop up at select Fry's Food Store locations. Bringing together job seekers and employers. This is the goal of this. It's, it's a new mobile career unit here hitting the streets of Phoenix. And it's the city's entry into something really cool. The Bloomberg Philanth uh, Philanthropy's Global Mayor's Challenge in, here in Phoenix. And this is actually competing for a million bucks. It's a collaborative effort here. The bus offers computer access, career counseling, even on-the-spot job interviews. And it's made stops at libraries and grocery stores. Winners are going to be announced next year. Well, pizza lovers rejoice because on today's bulletin board, yep, we got something just for you. <laughs> We're cooking up. The sixth annual Phoenix Pizza Festival is taking over Margaret T. Hans Park next weekend. But don't wait to get tickets because this event will sell out. 
Okay, so they're 12 bucks online for the tickets. Festival goers will be able to try pizzas from nearly two dozen local pizza makers. We got some good pizza in the valley. The slices cost two to four dollars each. There will also be live music, lawn games, and a kids area with pizza making crafts. The event is next Saturday and Sunday. For all the details, just go to phoenix.pizza. Try out some local pizza shops for less. That's what's making the bulletin board this morning. We'll talk about an out of this world taco Tuesday. Astronauts there on the International Space Station, they were able to harvest and eat their first crop of chili peppers grown all the way up there. Okay, so for the past two decades, most of their meals have been prepackaged, right? You've seen them, but this could clear the path for growing more fresh food on the space station. Imagine that. Talk about innovative, right? What will they think of next? It's <laughs> pretty newfangled. Next at 630, is Congress closer to a vote? The latest on the social spending package and that infrastructure bill. Promise to refund and then running into roadblocks only here on ABC 15. Investigator Joe Ducey takes action to help families get the money back they deserve. Now that kids as young as five have been green lighted to get the COVID vaccine, we're answering your questions about side effects from fertility to heart issues in our Health Insider. And things are finally opened back up after a wrong way crash shut down part of the Loop 101 in the West Valley for hours. I'll tell you what DPS says led up to all of this. And high pressure is now building in over Arizona, meaning our temperatures will be heating up and coming up in your exclusive Super 7-Day forecast. I'll tell you when we'll hit 90 degrees here in the valley.